with my other teammates are going to give a presentation over introduction to electronic commerce Next, what is an electronic commerce or e-commerce electronic commerce or e-commerce is the buying or selling of goods and services or transmitting of funds or data over an electronic network primarily the internet these business transactions occur either as business to business business to consumer consumer to consumer or consumer to business the terms e-commerce and e-business are often used interchangeably the term e-tail is also sometimes used in reference to the transactional processes that make up online retail shopping now our market analysts also projected that this e-commerce can surplus up to 8 trillion dollars by the year 2026 next slide next slide uh, now let's see some uh, top e-commerce companies who are uh, explore who are exploring this banking market of india so first one is the one of the global leading e-commerce website that is amazon.com as we all know and we all order sometimes order any type of product from this website amazon after amazon it is coming flipkart flipkart is a in, we can say that it is an indian version of amazon it has been founded by two uh, iitn in the year 2000 2006 and is one of the unicorn startup companies of india like likewise mintra nike are also fashion brands of fashion brands type uh, e-commerce websites uh, book my show is a ticket booking or show ticket booking website from where we can easily book our uh, eBay, book any type of events or shows uh, then it is uh, then uh, ebay is there ebay make my trip is a make my trip is a online uh, trip managing website then Azio is also a kind of uh, fashion e-commerce website and there are other e-commerce website uh, or website uh, e-commerce web companies are also present who are dominating this indian market mm. now let's see some uh, e-commerce models next slide yes uh, okay so there are different types of uh, mainly four types of e-commerce models first one is the business to consumer business to consumer is a type of inter interaction between where uh, a business sold as sell any product to a end user like consumer suppose you are buying pair of shoes from an online retailer or online website next one is the business to business when a business sells its product to another business when a uh, business sells its software as a service or any cloud services to other businesses which they use for their purposes next one is the consumer to consumer consumer to consumer is a type of interaction where the any used product of the consumer sold it sold again to another consumer like uh, you are selling any old furniture on ebay to another consumer next one is the consumer to business consumer to business differs from other e-commerce models because it's consumers who create value for a product or business in traditional business to consumer e-commerce model businesses sell products or services directly to the consumers with C2B, consumers offers products or services to businesses in exchange of monetary transactions or any other benefits. Now the other sections will be discussed by my other friends. Thank you. Good evening, sir. I'm Shubhraganti Ghosh. In this slide, we will discuss about the where and how does the e-commerce take place. The first one is the m-commerce. So the basically the m-commerce means that. The definition of m-commerce sought for mobile commerce mean m-commerce refers to any commercial transactions that take place via apps or mobile sites mobile commerce can be understood broadly as a subcategory of e-commerce as or as the mobile version of e-commerce the mobile commerce vertical is growing rapidly with a percentage and share of digital purchases that are taking place on mobile increasing easier easier then what's the difference between m-commerce and e-commerce the electronic commerce includes all commercial transactions that take place digitally and mobile commerce is strictly mobile dealing with digital transactions that take place on smartphones 
although in commerce is a subcategory of e commerce, the latter typically re refers to the transactions that take place on desktop computers. So, if you browse a clothing website on a desktop and make a purchase, that is an e commerce transaction. And if you access these or retailer via an app or a mobile site, then that is mobile commerce transaction. The second one is the enterprise e commerce. That is basically it is the buying and selling of products to large companies or organizations. The next one is social media e commerce. Basically, the social media can help you marketing or promoting commercial commerce stores to a broad audience. So you can see that when a new startup comes for to the angel investors or uh, or an investor who has founded a great company. So basically, first question they ask them to that how many followers do you have in your Instagram? Basically, they want to check that how can you, how are you willing to branding your uh, startup like uh, in, via Instagram. So basically, it is it can help you in attract new customers, build brand awareness, and generate online sales. Now we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of e-commerce. Next slide, please. The in this slide we'll we'll uh, continue up the uh, continuing the uh, topic for the benefits of e-commerce. Basically, the conducting sales online has some significant advantages. Among the top benefits of e-commerce, that is, it's growing rapidly. It offers global marketing. It is. It provides the easy of ordering products online. Generally, involves it involves lower operating costs and giving direct to consumer access. Next slide, please. Of e-commerce, despite a lot of advantages, e-commerce has does a downside. Some businesses may try to avoid e-commerce due to some challenges, like it is. It has the limited face-to-face -face interaction. It has some technical difficulties. Data security can be a good challenge, but shipping and fulfillment at scale is not the up to mark. So these are the some disadvantages of e-commerce website. Uh, next slide will be described by my friends. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm Tadavadu Kaur. Now I'll be discussing about the essential criteria to choose the best e-commerce service in India. So first point is service and of course the reach. It is the most important factor to consider when deciding which e-commerce firm to shop, right? Those who deliver or ship your desired products are under, uh, conveniently are undoubted to be the best. Next comes the product service and benefits. So each e-commerce business we all know offer a distinct range of products and services. The ideal e-commerce platform provides a wide, a wide range of service and benefits in one place removing the need to switch between different apps. The third point is delivery mechanisms. So it, is, it refers to the whole system that any e-commerce company uses for regular delivery. Uh, it is crucial to check if the company platform can supply a variety of products in a safe and high quality manner. You wouldn't want to wait for a product that has been damaged. Next comes the delivery speed. An e-commerce company with fast track deliveries guarantees customer happiness and fewer cancellations. Uh, fewer cancellations. Now, next we can we next point is tracking visibility and the e-commerce company which provides the real time order tracking with automatic regular updates are more reliable from the point of view of customers. And then the proof of delivery is also a factor. The best e-commerce company is always the one that has a clear policy and system for transmitting the proof of delivery so that the customer complaints can be clearly documented and the delivery personnel is held accountable for the condition of the product at the time of delivery. Next comes return management. The best, so the best company should have a solid return management system wherein a pickup time is established and the company is responsible for ensuring the package reaches stages to return the enterprise and then the best company should, should also maintain the track record so that it can be well documented it can be found anywhere at any time. Now we will start this. Now we will be discussing about some types of threats to e-commerce. These are such as tax evasion, e-wallets, cross-site scripting, bio bots, payment conflicts, phishing, trojans, DDoS attacks, financial fraud, SQL injection, brute force attack, and scheming. Now I will discuss about some of these. Uh, tax in evasion includes organizations show legal paper records to revenue the IRS, but in case of e-commerce shopping, online transactions take place due to which funds get transferred electronically due to which IRS is not able to count the transactions properly. Uh, if we 
talk about financial fraud whenever an online transaction or transfer of fund take place it always ask for some pins or passwords to authenticate but due to some spyware or viruses used by the attackers they can also process the transaction of the users by allowing the unauthorized person which will lead to cause a financial fraud with the user now talking about e wallets are it is an essential part of e-commerce platform in recent times attack on e wallets can lead to the leak of sensitive banking credentials of the users which can be used by the attackers for their own profit now talking about phishing we all know about it it is one of the most common attacks nowadays on the user right where the attackers send emails and messages to a large number of users which contains a link to which invites them to open when the users open that link in their browser the malware starts downloading in the background and simultaneously they fall under their prey now if i talk about sql injection it is used by the attackers to manipulate the database of large organizations in similar fashion if i talk about cross site scripting it is uh, when hackers target the e-commerce by entering e-commerce sites by entering malicious code into their code base it can enable the attackers to track the users by their browsing activity now if i talk about ddos it means distributed denial of service attacks are the most commonly used by hackers to not allow original users to access and buy and sell products from the e-commerce platforms they simultaneously make the server busy so that it is not usable by the authorized users now if i talk about trojans attackers may use software that may appear to be useful before downloading but after downloading the software it installs all the machine learning program on the computer it collects different data like personal details address uh, in fact your credit card or debit card details etc now come to the next step please so here are some three points by which we can prevent our threats while doing while using the e-commerce sites such as by deploying anti malware services uh, we can deploy it on our computers so that we can prevent these conditions to happen it prevents all type of malware and viruses to infect the data on our computer we can use https https helps to keep the website data secure from any kind of digital attack ssl and https encrypt all the data of the users which is harder to crack by the hackers and the payment gateway we can use secure payment gateway used on the e-commerce websites which is very high secure and the strict policies against leaking any financial credential of any user now the next slide will be discussed by shorashit and i will come back to explain more slides so good evening sir so firstly i will be discussing about rules of e-commerce these have uh, in recent times more have become like features of e-commerce because more or less every company tries to follow this so firstly it's about the website obviously because it's the first contact with your customer so every e-commerce company try uh, must make their website website uh, intuitive and the navigation must be made simple because not everyone is well uh, familiar with technology and to attract more and more audience the na navigation needs to be simple now every e-commerce company This website will have a lot, uh, lots of photos and videos. So, you know, your server must be good enough to handle all this because if the uh, website takes a lot of time to load, it will uh, have a negative impact on the customer, and obviously, one doesn't want. Now, then there is this uh, real-time customer service, which uh, like. not all companies offer that but it is something that is uh, like becoming mainstream by the day then uh, whenever like all the e-commerce websites utilize their customers data in different forms so whatever data you collect you must be securing that data and think of it as a global perspective in a global perspective because all that data you are collecting a lot of it is personal data and the user might not be uh, comfortable with it being shared publicly so protecting that data is quite important and then being clear on all the charges like delivery charges taxes and all that and offering fast shipping these are like have like become the features now but these were kind of the rules 
to start with. Now, staying secure is something that is very important and this, uh, this is what is uh, said in the IT law of India, the cyber IT law of India. So the cyber law yields uh, legal recognition of electronic documents and a structure to support e-filing and e-commerce transactions and also provides a legal structure to reduce or check cyber crimes. So e-commerce websites are like very prone to cyber attacks because obviously there's a lot of payment and a lot of cash flow is going through and these are some something that appeal to most to the hackers so every e-commerce website must follow the cyber laws these cyber laws cover all the transactions that happen over the internet it keeps eyes on all the activities over the internet and it touches on every action and every reaction in the cyberspace so uh, now we will be discussing about amazon's uh, strategy and Flipkart's business model, which will again be discussed by Tadavato here. So, we know Amazon is a worldwide brand and the actual strategy used by Amazon digital marketing efficiently across all customer communication touch point is their race framework, where R stands for reach, A stands for A, C stands for convert and E stands for engage. So reach means Amazon's initial business growth based on a detailed approach to, to SEO and AdWords targeting million of keywords and act by creating clear and simple experiences through testing and learning. Convert means using personalization to make relevant recommendations and a clear checkout process that may now imitate. And engage means Amazon's customer centric culture delights customers and keep them coming back for this is the Amazon's actual strategy. Now come to the next slide, please. So apart from Amazon, one of the other bigger, biggest company in Indian e-commerce world is Flipkart. And we all know that Flipkart is the first e-commerce company established in 2007 in Bangalore by Sachin Bansal and Bini Bansal. And it's selling only books at the beginning, but now it has a wide range of products. So here we can see that Flipkart was initially a self-funded business model in the beginning and it started with only just 4 lakh rupees as e-commerce size to sell books on. It innovated the idea of cash and delivery system for the first time in the e-commerce world in India, which was which has played a major role in change the in changing the condition of the market. And the customer problem solving oriented approach made this business model of Flipkart too much successful, right? And now we can conclude our PPT, which will be done by our show Okay, so open the mic. So to conclude, we can say that uh, e-commerce industry is bound to see exceptional growth over the years, and obviously it will be led by the industry stalwarts like Amazon, Flipkart, eBay. Uh, now, in, these are mainly because of the increasing industry investments, the government policies, and these and the MNIs. Obviously, these are there are other reasons also for the development of this industry. But and also one of the main reasons the e-commerce has developed this much is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, uh, people were not able to go out during that time, and uh, e-commerce websites like Big Basket also had a big break during COVID-19 because the food delivery was a big thing during that time. Uh, so, but to like, there are people who still prefer buying fresh vegetables from the market rather than ordering them from Big Basket and other apps like that. So what we think is the most growth will be seen in beauty and wellness food and grocery the food here is like uh, websites like swiggy and zomato these kind of food delivery apps uh, then grocery websites electronic trade apparel sectors obviously apparel sector is one of the biggest in e-commerce uh, also 
this e-commerce industry has seen remarkable investments by big brands like Facebook, Google, Reliance, Retail, etc. So these are our references. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good presentation.